Welcome back, Zero K fans, to round four of the February 2018 1v1 tournament. We are going to be starting out with the match between N2O and Catastrophe, as we have, I don't know, halfway through the tournament, Waka Flocka Memes and GPR Kira have both left, so we are down to 10 players. But that is still a significant amount of players for this tournament. And at this point, N2O and Catastrophe, I believe, are near to the bottom. Yeah, they're currently running one and two, respectively. So still, they still actually have time to get to climb their way back up. Like, for those of you not familiar, it is going to be top four into a bracket. That is the current idea of what's going to happen after the Swiss phase. So, whoever's in top four, they move on to single elimination. Anyway, I'm well, still I'm... joined by Hokomoko. So, hey, Hokomoko. hi -o. Anyway, uh, I don't know N2O. But I suppose we'll know him after this battle. Catastrophe is a very aggressive player. Um, I expect some rating to happen. And yes, he's going cloakies. And N2O is doing something. I'm I don't pretty know sure N2O he's going doing. to put the factory. Yeah. Ah, there it is. Okay. So yeah, cloakies be cloaky. Yeah. On this map, that's no surprise. Dual Icy Run, actually one of my favorite. One of the maps I haven't seen a whole lot of, but it is a map I quite like. Certainly, I think the best iteration of Icy Run as a concept. Yes, well, the, the, you know, Icy Run itself is a bit too, you know, narrow, narrow. <laughs> and and very, very, I, you know, either porky or cheesy. So, so I prefer it, like the dual is, has the balance, which is not too big and has enough metal, but uh, on the other hand, it's not a huge macro map. Um, I don't think it's going to be um, a very long game. We'll I, see. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, it is it is a situation where everything's spread out, so it's easy to raid a bit, but it's also hard to get to one base and just completely shut it down and then be done with it. Right, so, right. It'll depend on the players, I'd say, more than anything, but I do see what you mean, how it's probably not going to be a massively, ma massively macro porky game that goes on for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but ev everything is possible. Like... um. Well, mm, right Catastrophe, up. send some glaives. Oh no, they're going at the commander. Ooh. Well, a bit of unlucky, bit of an unlucky positioning there, but at least they know where the commander is, should they want to send half yeah. a dozen glaives over to kill it. Because, I mean, why not? There's nothing else around, and almost might as well. And at this point, stopping into a scout, and that is opening things up, and it looks like Catastrophe is indeed going forward with those glaives. But over to the north side, they just want to get into N2O's base. They don't want to try to kill the commander this early. Mm -hmm. And the commander, I'm not sure where it is going, but um, maybe to close off the south. Um, it's lacking a bit in expansion. You can see how Catastrophe is going with forward expansion and carefully, you know, protect his maxes with Dotuses. Um, mm -hmm. That's the thing I'm noticing is that it is a, it is a slightly perky setup from Catastrophe. And there's into a building up the metal extractor, but that is, like you said, a bit more speed on Catastrophe's part. And they're a bit more on the ball with that expansion stuff. I am a bit surprised they're not building up a whole lot of conjurers, but they do have their conjurer now. The one conjurer, but or two conjurers rather, but the one in the south has been building more defenses, just trying to make sure that if anything raids around the mountains, it won't be able to find much. And that, I'd say, is a smart thing to do on this map. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the kills are bot pathable. It is very important to note. Um, so, mm -hmm. so there isn't really a safe place in this map. <laughs> nope. And at this point, Glaive's actually managing to get a bit of... Oh, nice! Nice harassment to N2O getting through the Lotus. I like the power plant placement, but it wasn't quite enough to stop the Glaive's. Not managing at the Conjurer, though. That is... That yeah, is going to suck. Especially since this Lotus to the south, that should kill them, or at least heavily damage them. Like, there's... No, no, this nah, kills Yeah, them. two fully health, two health glaives. They'll manage to get some damage in, manage to get no, rid of the oh. metal extractor. This was nice. Yeah, that was a really good raid from N2O. Two metal extractors and a couple static defense. Well, a couple pieces of static defense. No workers, mind you, which would have been the real prize. Right. But that does still slow Catastrophe down a little bit and keep N2O and four metal per second for a small while. About 10, 15 seconds. But hey, that's, that's something. At the same time, though, we have a raid possibly coming in from Catastrophe, but they are deciding that Prudence is a better part of Valor here, and or Discretion Rather is a better part of Valor here, and just keeping their Glaze alive. 
Yeah, it's like, you know, glaives versus glaives, everybody's trying to run away. It's not entirely obvious how you're supposed to, you know, send your glaives forward. But, um, well, everybody tries. You can see now that even as they're fighting there, uh, N2O is sending a few glaives to the south. I'm thinking that's more of a protective thing. If you look at the way... No! Oh, really? That isn't protective. That's being built. There's a bunch of planned construction from catastrophe over through the entire center. That glaive is that glaive army is just going to be there to stop any from expansion from happening right now. It could go in to deal more damage, but right now mm -hmm. it's basically just there to prevent any expansion attempts. But at the same time, N2O doesn't have a whole lot of defense coming in against these glaives. The Rocco is up, but I'm right. not seeing. Yeah, and, it's not Rocco helping now. Not the warriors in the like, yeah. There's. Not a warrior. It's a reaver. There's a reaver in the back, but it's not here. Still, though, N2O managing to somehow win this, or at least do a lot of damage, despite the fact that they were advancing and not retreating. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, Catastrophe is out microing here and out macroing even. So this is um, actually a very nice play. Yeah, I like the fact that this rock was here. That is going to keep things safer. Uh, that does push catastrophe back a little bit, give N2O a bit more room to breathe. And at yeah, this yeah. point, N2O has actually a pretty good set for map control. Mm. Oh, except for this Rocco being destroyed. Actually, no, never mind. They've lost that. Yeah, no, no, no they don't. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, the, the Ronin managed to send the river back a bit, but oh, Ronin, right. not enough. Calling him Rocco. No, no, Ronin now. Like, <laughs> I said Rocco earlier, so it's entirely. <laughs> yes. Entirely, but yeah, it makes sense. Normally, it doesn't take me this long to get used to name changes. This is maybe just because there's so many of them. and Yeah, so many. I haven't, I didn't cast the last couple weeks, so. Oh, well. Yeah, it will come, it will come. Still, though, Catastrophe is managing to find a lot of death and not a whole lot of anything else with the glaze over to the south, so N2O is able to hold on and still able to maintain a decent position economically, but it is tricky. As one metal structure in the back, I really would like them to take. But everything else, I can see why they're not taking it yet. Or why they're being careful about it. Because, yeah, Catastrophe just has a slightly stronger army, slightly better position. And it's just that much harder for N2O to find anything for them to actually set up that works. Although, that being said, their commander does have a machine gun. They can deal with the Glaives no problem. Throughout the game, you can see that... Both players don't have big armies. They they mostly trade and and armies kill each other. So no one by now really had any, you know, enough units to make a big assault to make a significant breaking of the lines. Uh, so it's actually the exact opposite of what I said. It does become a matter of who expands more and who makes more metal. So. Who's the first one to actually manage to get a critical mass of units? And it looks like that is turning out to be N2O. Catastrophe focusing really? a lot more on static defense. They have, I mean, they have the Rockers and Glaze, but right now, N2O has enough Glaze they can start to actually look work on split rating if they wanted to. Unfortunately, these Ronin up, up in the front are going to be killed. Like, there's no easy way for them to get out of this bad situation. But there are quite a few N2 in the back lines. Oh. One. Reaver from N2O could set them up for a really strong position. Right, but N2O is also accessing, and he doesn't have... True. Um, they don't have... Uh, how do you call it? Gator here. So, Catastrophe doesn't have... Oh, Catastrophe is making a caretaker here. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, Catastrophe also this accessing is... a little bit. This is... Man, it's yeah, the thing you gotta always be mindful. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That but does, however, give N2O works. a bit of an opportunity if they were to build a caretaker, but they haven't been at all. Or much of anything. Mm -hmm. They are, however, building a second factory, building a proxy light vehicle factory. That's an interesting choice. And that position's risky, but at this point, they do more or less have control over it. Mm -hmm. I don't know yet what they're going to build, but probably they have a good... Oh, look, the south. We have a small raid from Catastrophe. Yeah, that should, that'll get through the Lotus without too many issues. A couple of the Glaives will die, but actually, no, never mind. Enough of the Glaives will die in the process, going after the Metal Extractor instead, that they aren't actually able to do much. 
Oh, no, Nothing no. happens out of that. And at the same time, the center losing a few Ronin, but N2O is still okay and going to the north instead to try to counter raid. And that's a much more effective counter raid setup. The only problem, of course, being that now everything's open and this rover assembly is really vulnerable. There's nothing stopping the Ronin from getting to it. The Glaives are way out of position to do anything defensively and essentially hoping that Catastrophe gets scared and pulls back. And that's assuming into his commander survives. And to what? Why are you leaving commander out in front? It's going to die! Well, it, it, this is exactly the point that commanders have enough health to tank a bit, but not too much. So you wanted it in the, in the you know in the front, and you wanted to take damage, just not too much. And this exact balance is whether your comm stays alive or dies. Well, at least Entoa did go for the auto repair, so their comm will be fine, assuming they don't take damage for a short while. At the same time, units in the back not really being microed out a bit, so clearly N2O could could stand to practice their micro a little bit, just to deal with split force and so forth, seeing as they are going for these raids. Which would deal a fair amount of damage if they were able to focus on them, help them out a bit, or go around and take care of mental extractors while the front lines are being engaged. But that's not the case. So actually, at this point, I would just recommend N2O. I'd like to see them just not bother with split attacks and harassment, and instead just try to build up a force up front and just roll in, keeping their focus on one army at a time. Like, Catastrophe hasn't really been pushing a lot of split raid forces themselves either, so it's not something that is going to give Entuo a massive disadvantage in this fight. Yeah, but in, in general, yeah, I think Catastrophe raiding slightly better and splitting slightly better, so... Um, yeah, that is still tricky. Know. We have a leveler coming yeah, up, though. Or rather, not leveler, it's Ripper coming up from Entuo. That's what they built the, the rover assembly for, and that is not and, a bad idea. But look at the cloaky factory that is going to die. That's the thing. I don't know why they didn't spend that money on reavers. Because the ripper isn't that much faster than a reaver, and it's way less effective against glaives. Like, you need to have four or five rippers before yeah. you can start really getting rid of an army like this. And without the cloaky factory, that is just rippers. That's all there is. And unless there's three or four of them, at least, there's no easy way to deal with anything. And not to mention, now there's no more Ronin. Now there's no more Glaives. Not, not really anything to raid with. And N2O lost all the ones they had. Now the Reavers can just stomp into the base. Well, only the Com is there to, to, to try and Won't do much. Them. Against Reavers? Are you kidding? Two of them, well, three of them at this stage with the way N2O's commander is built. That would kill it. No problem. Right. Right. And they don't even care. The the Catastrophe just going straight to the back. Slightly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's always better to attack where the where your enemy isn't. That is a fair point. I mean, that just breaks into O's economy a little further, gives Catastrophe a little bit of an extra edge, and that should pretty well close this out. Into O has no real production coming in there. They have they have some assistance on the Ripper, but that's it. And again, the Rippers aren't. I mean, enough of them could help, but it's not enough, all things considered. And especially considering what they had before, what they lost to get that vehicle plant for the rover assembly. Okay, they started reclaiming, which is nice. Um, and they have a con assisting the factory. This is not enough, but, well, it will give them a short boost. But yeah, with Catastrophe with 33 metal, it's just too much. In, in these cases, I just usually send my units with an attack command into the enemy base to just keep them occupied. Mm -hmm. um, you, you don't need micro anymore when you have such a metal disparity. And it's pretty clear that's exactly what Catastrophe is doing. And honestly, that's what I was kind of hoping I'd see N2O, N2O do, but that is not what we're seeing. And Catastrophe should be able to pull this out as long as they're able to keep this consistent. I mean, the Ripper's actually managing to take advantage of his HP to deal some damage and break a few small things here and there, but nothing meaningful enough to turn this game around yet. And considering right, N2O's like... middle disadvantage, I don't know if they will turn the game around. Basically, at the moment, the GG will turn the game around. And nothing short of that. Um, the, the amount of uh, 
were run-ins. Uh, it's just too big. The amount of metal, the amount of everything. The com is going down in, in a, f I don't know, a few seconds. Well, that is going to be it. And that commander down is going to be likely what breaks N2O. Yeah. I mean, they've been focusing so heavily on the commander. And with that, no GG. Interesting. They're still apparently in this, but they haven't got anything to build defenses with. So the rover, assemb the rover assembly is doomed to collapse, at which point we're going to have... We should have GG. I mean, I I'm assuming Intuo we'll realizes see. that you're supposed to say GG when you know you've lost. <laughs> I hope so. I think what, what really decided this game was, was the just expansion. Um, mm -hmm. that, and, and the fact that yeah. Catastrophe managed to do both at the same time. It's just like you can focus on, on micro, but you must do the expansion at the same time. If you don't, you're staying behind. And that's exactly what happened with N2O's good raids at the start, but nothing really to follow up, and without a whole lot of focus on, especially the metal extractor over in the southwest, that 2.1 right below where they started. I'm surprised they didn't take that. Just the way they approached that, I don't know, it was a very strange way of approaching it, and it did not work for them. So, well, that, that was that match. Also, those of you wondering why I didn't cast Sigero and Philthos, although I think we might still have time to get to catch some of that, I I like to do I like to have everyone on stream at least once. So we had plenty of Philthos and Sigero already, or I had some of Philthos and Sigero already. I just figured that would be that be something to do in the next round, or in the following round, or whatever. And I think at this point, Philthos and Sigero are still available. So, let's go check him out. I cannot even find it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the game. Yes. Hmm. Now, of course, I'm well, assuming that we're actually going to see much of anything in the next little while, because... Yeah. I mean, Phil My right, money is, let's say, cloaky. No, actually, we have a shield player. Oh, well, that's an interesting approach. Granted, shields isn't too uncommon, especially on a map like this. But, something. Anyway, again, right off the bat, we have... Oh, wow, proxy shield, not even just shield. Very forward coming out from Sigurdor here. Field us, however, expanding rapidly enough, not managing to hold off... Well, actually managing to hold off some, some attacks over to the south, but potentially losing their commander... Ooh, that was close. That was dangerously close to losing their commander right there. Got it saved, and at this point, Fieldtoss is doing a decent enough job keeping things alive. Well, at the same time, ah, there is... Is that Sigiro's commander down, or is it a ro Nah, it's a roach. So yeah, Sigiro managing to hold off reasonably well, keep decent map control up to the 8-minute mark, and now it's just a matter of whether or not Fieldtoss is able to push in with all this, and they are, at least managing to hold off whatever Sigiro's army comes in, but all these roaches already set up means that there's not much hope for Fieldtoss getting past the mid-line, that is no man's land with all the landmines in place. And it looks like overall we are seeing Sigero manage to start turning this around. They have the metal advantage coming in at the 12 minute mark. And that oh. is going to lead to a decent army advantage. And again, more roaches at least. So Sigero at least keeping everything in place. But not a whole the, lot of raids coming in the north and south. I think it's roaches together with the shield bolt that managed to kind of stop the avalanche of cloak units. Pretty much. And Snitch, actually, is not Roach, but yes, yeah, Snitch. Yeah, snitch. Same idea. Of course. No, we're talking about walking landmine. And actually, oh, that turned it around boat. massively. So yeah, we're getting the openings they needed now, and Field Us has basically nothing. Both their Spectres down, and that is game right as we get in here because, well, Snitches. Snitches, exactly. It's the, the careful snitch can just do so much its weight in metal. Just, I don't know, ten times. Um, well, in fact, it was 160 opponents. metal offhand. <laughs> yeah. No, well, that was that was shorter than I thought it would be. And I think Foreign and CPO <laughs> is pretty much done too. So we're just gonna take a short break, getting into round five, and that is going to be. That should be fairly short with 
a couple of, a couple fewer players than before. But, eh, that's how it goes sometimes. So anyway, stay tuned for that. We'll be back in a couple minutes. See ya.